Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channel's television. And back in the nation's capital, Abuja, the presidency is insisting that President Mohamed Abouari is aware of the sack of the Director General of the Department of State Services, Mr. Lawan Daura. The special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Mr. Femi Adishin, explains that there was no way the acting president, Professor Yemi Shibaju, would sack Mr. Daura without the knowledge of President Buhari. Mr. Adishin says since there was no rift between the two leaders, he expected that the decision would be a unanimous one. He also added that there was no tussle for power and no tough battle between the acting president and his principal. What we'd like to say for the opportunity time is that the presidency is one. Whenever the president is proceeding on vacation, he transmits power to the vice president who then becomes the acting president. On this occasion, he also did that. So the acting president has all the powers of a president. Now, it's a matter then of decency. And we know that the acting president is a decent man. There is no tussle for power. There is no tough battle between him and the president. When something like what happened yesterday will happen, there then will be unanimity. There's no way there won't be unanimity on that kind of decision. It's not something that uh, will be discussed with the press, but know that there was unanimity in that decision. In other stories, the Aquaibum State Government is alleging that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has frozen its bank account. The State Commissioner for Information, Charles Udo, who confirmed the story to Channel Television, says the state government will make an official statement on the matter soon. The allegation is coming less than 24 hours after the Benway state government raised an alarm that the EFCC had frozen all the accounts of the state government. While efforts to reach the spokesperson of the EFCC also proved abortive as his phone lines were not connecting. And over to legal matters now, where the Federal High Court in Abuja has ordered the Inspector General of Police to produce the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, in court on the 14th of August. Justice Stephen Pam gave the order after counsel to the INEC chairman, Mr. Deboyega Awomolo, told the court that he did not know where his client was. The court had on August the 1st issued a bench warrant for the arrest of Mr. Mahmoud Yakubu for flagrant disobedience of court orders. According to the judge, the bench warrant issued for the, his arrest has not been vacated and still subsists. The matter has been adjourned until August the 14th for continuation of committal proceedings. While well, still staying with legal matters, a high court sitting in Oshubo, the Oshun State Capital, has dismissed a suit filed against Senator Dimola Deleke of the People's Democratic Party over his eligibility to participate in the September the 22nd governorship election. The plaintiffs, Mr. Rashid Olatunji and Mr. Edou Aluasheon, had on July the 23rd, 2018, approached the court contending that the PDP candidate was not eligible to participate in the primary election of the party because he does not possess minimum required educational qualification, praying the court to set the election aside. The counsel to the plaintiffs, Mr. Lufemi Ayodokun, had earlier told the court that the certificate tendered by Senator Adeleke to INEC and the court was forged and asked the court to take judicial notice of the date on the certificate. Well, in his ruling, Justice Oladimeji David said the application lacks merit and that the law does not stipulate that the candidate should pass secondary school level but must only enroll and the application tendered by the plaintiff has admitted that the first defendant attended Ede Muslim High School and the application, therefore, does not address fraud and forgery of any kind. Well, the Not Too Young to Run campaigns have listed uh, conditions for political parties to, to get votes from youths ahead of the 2019 election. They are demanding for considerations for young disabled candidates and specific number of legislative seats at the federal and state levels. They're also asking political parties to do away with automatic tickets and imposition of candidates. They made their demands known to journalists at a rally in Abuja, after which they took their campaign to the office of some political parties.
The federal government has promised to track crude oil losses through a device to be purchased at 17 billion naira that is expected to boost revenue to the federation account from 2019. While the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Ibeka Chuku, told State House correspondents, and this was after the Federal Executive Council meeting, chaired by the acting president, Professor Yumi Shibajo, that the council has approved the installation of a technology monitoring scheme which will, for the first time, ascertain the nation's daily petrol consumption. Our correspondent, Gloria Mizuke, reports. The acting president, Professor Yemi Oshimbaju, presides over the week's Federal Executive Council meeting. After the closed-door meeting, the federal government's move to clamp down on crude oil losses incurred by the nation came to the fore. The, president had given a the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Mr. Ibe Kachiku, says the government will procure a device to ascertain the nation's daily petrol consumption. It will enable us to track uh, refined petroleum product movement from the point of uh, LC opening, uh, so on the vessels that come to Nigeria, up until the point that they're discharged into tanks in Nigeria, and from the tanks into trucks in Nigeria, monitor the trucks until they deliver the product into the storage tanks for the filling stations, and they're discharged uh, and sold. Uh, so that will bring, produce a 100% holistic coverage of monitoring this product. For the first time, we'll be able to actually tell what do we really consume in this country. We have promised that within one year, the real effects of this will begin to show. Currently, we don't Nigeria's have finance minister announced the council's approval of a 150 million US dollars credit facility to support the fight against polio eradication. It's the, what is called phase three of the polio eradication project. Nigeria is en route to becoming polio free and uh, we've been receiving significant support from uh, the donor community towards this. However, there are 12 states that are seen as slightly behind and so this uh, $150 million facility from the World Bank, which has an interest rate of 1.25%, a moratorium of five years and a repayment period of 30 years. The, the council has also approved 348.5 billion naira for the construction of 420.6 kilometers Akwanga Jos Bauchi Gombe Road. A total of 420 kilometers, 420.6 kilometers. The project scope is the expansion of the current two single lane highway into a dual carriageway. Now, what is significant about this is that it completes the integration of the North Central with the Southeast and the Northeast. The construction, which will aid major movement of agriculture produce, is expected to be completed in 48 months. From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. And when the news at 10 returns, Nigeria incentive-based risk-sharing system for agriculture draws up new strategy to assist farmers affected by climate change. Please stay with us.